beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed hallelujah I told us how that many pastors do not have financial literacy and how that the church is also an institution an institution is a platform for the transference of knowledge there are many well-meaning pastors they are anointed they love the Lord they are born again they are very sincere people they love the sheep of God but they lack financial literacy so when it comes they either do not touch on that subject and leave people to just guess whatever they feel about finances or they touch it but they limit it to what they know and usually it's just tithing and offering and they stop there and so the the general teaching to the congregation is tight and give and then expect blessings and there are so many people in the body of christ favor comes but lack of financial literacy and the formula for wealth keeps driving it out of their lives right and I told us that many preachers do not even know why they are wealthy. They think they are wealthy because they are preaching the gospel. That's not true. You will know at the end of the teaching tonight. Praise the Lord. And so we seek to, in this series, go direct straight to the point. That's why I'm not even talking about tithing and giving and all of that. We have been able to touch that. I want to believe that the average committed person in this place already has this foundational knowledge about tithing as the key that opens the heavens and so on and so forth i want to teach us something that anyone can use and be rich not just a preacher the gospel of prosperity we are teaching in nigeria will only make a preacher rich if you are not a preacher you will not be rich from it what i want to teach you will make anyone i don't care what the situation is hallelujah praise the lord and so we considered a few things um why so many people are poor in the last um discussion that we had we said how that they have not decided to be wealthy they do not have a goal to be wealthy a clear goal lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance and then most importantly lack of the mental transition and i think the media department did justice on that reminding us all through the week never forget this that the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not the money in their pocket the money in your pocket is a receipt for having a healthy mindset or otherwise this money the naira is only a physical expression praise the lord just a physical expression finance can i have some money help me so that some people will wake up now. There are some of you who will never understand this teaching until you see real money. Just any amount, just something to hold. And then we considered the myths and the mindsets that keep people poor. I taught us how that there are mentalities, there are, there are sayings, there are cliches 
that have been accepted in our society that keep people poor. Number one is that, I'm just doing a quick recap. Number one is that money and abundance is carnal, evil, or unnecessary. Praise the Lord. There have been this illusion, this, this teaching, okay, thank you very much. There have been this teaching, this illusion that money and abundance is carnal. Please don't let anyone fool you. Money is very important. Say it. One more time. If you ever trivialize the importance of money in your life, you will pay for it dearly. By the grace of God, I love you too much to lie to you and to spiritualize out the importance of money. Finance is very important to the quality of your life, to your assignment, and to the advancement of the kingdom. Say one more time, money is very important. The Bible never says money is the root of evil. It says the love of money. And the word there is eros, lust for money. The kind of ungodly passion to seek money that will take you to hell. That's what the Bible says is evil. It never said money is the root of all evil. Hallelujah. Myth number two. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. Another wrong mindset. So many people justify their poverty as being the will of God. And sadly, many of our elder ones, our lovely parents, lovely fathers and mothers, most of them, their generation grew with that illusion of the exclusive sovereignty of God. The meaning of that is God is sovereign. He does whatever he wants. Human beings have no contribution to the outcome of their destiny. So we have agreed and most of our parents transferred that mindset to us. Praise the Lord. Wrong mindset. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. If God wants you to bath, he will bath you. If God wants you to go to school, he will take you to school. No, no, no. We, we have common sense in every other area except finances. When you are hungry, God does not open the fridge for you. He grants you life and energy. And you take advantage of that energy and you go and open your fridge and feed yourself. Right? Understand this. At every point in your Christian journey, there will always be a role you have to play in determining the outcome of your destiny. Bishop Oyedeko said, every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There will always be a part to play if you be willing and obedient. If there is good in the land, but if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. So that's the second myth. Myth number three, which has brought a lot of deception to the body of Christ, is that tithing is the one and only key to abundance. How many sincere preachers, godly preachers, lovely, wonderful, God-fearing preachers have misled millions of people in Nigeria into the illusion that the moment you are tithing, that is the one and only thing you need to do and everything will change automatically. I am telling you this by the word of the Lord. That's not an accurate teaching. It's a sincere teaching, but it's not true. If that were true, I guarantee you that 90% of the Christians around who have been faithful titers would have had their status change radically. Is that true? Tithing is the law of open heavens. It opens your heavens so that everything you do under that open heavens prospers. But that's not the only key. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, not the key. Keys, meaning tithing and giving as powerful as they are. They are the keys that release the treasures from the realm of the spirit. But we must sustain the technology and the formula to make it manifest here and now in our life. Say amen. Myth number four. That's the one you find around so many people in our society today. And I believe some of us were shocked. I remember one person talking to me 
I think over last week or so, and he said he was surprised when I mentioned this. If I can just have a business idea and capital, I will be rich. It's a lie. Tell your neighbor it's not true. Turn to your neighbor and say it's not true. Many of us think the reason... <laughs> see many people still laughing. They are still reminiscing on the seriousness of what I said. It's as serious as what I'm saying now. All I need is 20,000. And I have that um, small shop. Or I have my fura or yogurt, my stand. Or I have whatever it is. So many people believe that this is all they need. Give me this. Plus the business idea I have. And I am rich. I can, I can bet you with my life. I can bet you with my life that you will not be rich that way. You will enjoy money for a few weeks or months or highest a year and crash back to where you were. I have tried this too many times with people. Too many times. Businessman, sit down quietly this night and listen. There are so many people moving around. I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman. What do you really need? Capital. Oh God, it's not capital. No, sir. No, sir. I prove you wrong a thousand times. It's not capital. I'm not daft. I know what I'm saying. It's not capital. Because your physical environment will always be a reflection of your mindset. Give a poor man money. How many who want to be a millionaire have you had in Nigeria that got the one million and were able to still remain millionaires after one year? Have you not heard of people who won lotteries? $10 million, $1 million, $100,000. They laugh about it. How many people have won cars and from Gulda, uh, Maltina, Indomie, they stand on your television screen and they snap them with the money. Few months later, their mindset has eaten everything in their physical reality. Because until the adjustment takes place here, nothing you do physically will supplement for a wrong mindset. Are we blessed? So the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is their mindset. The biggest difference. This is a receipt. If I buy this, um, this gadget, they will give me a receipt. The receipt is a sign that I have bought it, not a sign that I will buy it. It's a sign that I've bought it. Look at me. This that I'm holding, if it comes into your life, is only a receipt. It's not the reason why you are rich. It's the proof that you are rich. Are you getting me now? Physical cash coming into your hands is not the reason why you are rich this is the receipt that you are rich is God speaking to us so if this has not come into your life then it is a sign that you are not rich you see that the rich are not those who have this they necessarily had to have it because they are rich Praise the Lord. So we discuss that very quickly. And then, number five, the myth we considered was entitlement mentality. Remember? The feeling that someone is responsible for your success and prosperity. I said it was many of us are angry with our parents, we're angry with our bosses in office, we're angry with our uncles and aunties, angry with the rich people in our family because we think that they are supposed to bless us because they are rich and we are offended we are bitter against them and their loved ones it's an entitlement mentality it's one of the greatest killers of wealth potentials in africa so the moment you become rich everybody in your family is leeching onto you hoping that you will meet their needs there are some people even angry cursing you it will never be well with you. You saw my rent expire and you didn't come to pay it. Entitlement mentality. 
that mentality that transfers the responsibility of your financial destiny to someone else to pay the price for you and then you receive the result i told us last week that how many poor people go to meet rich people for help sir my rent has expired how much is the rent 250,000 or 300,000 or 500,000 or whatever it is and then the rich man counts the money and gives the poor man and he never sits down to say uncle by the way I'm tired of coming to beg you is there something you will do to teach me they will never say that what will they say thank you and they will go back and carry their stumbling block of poverty and return after one year asking the same thing again they will come back and find out that within that one year the uncle has built another house they knock the house and they say your uncle does not live here again we are his tenants and you go back to his house his status has changed a thousand times and nothing has changed in the life of the same person praise the lord is god helping us so that very wrong mentality and then we, we started we stopped at how to be wealthy i was teaching us directly straight to the point without ambiguity how do you become rich number one you must decide to be wealthy i told us that many people do not decide to be wealthy they hate poverty they wish to be prosperous but they never decide to be wealthy the difference between a wish and a decision is that the difference between a wish and a decision is that a wish a wish is just a desire just a general desire over something a wish is a general desire are you getting my point now but a decision is a strong desire thank you a strong desire that is backed up by the willingness to pay the price and take responsibility the responsibility that will produce that outcome are you getting the point now so many people have not decided to be rich they hate poverty they are angry about it they admire wealthy people they wish they sit down and keep their dreaming but they have not decided say i decide to be rich say i decide to be wealthy no 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 it's not carnal say it from with every sense of spirituality and seriousness i decide to be rich hallelujah it's not enough to say i hate poverty how many people have said it the more they say it, the closer it comes to them because that's not the key to exiting it out decision decision time does not change things time only reveals the true state of things only decisions change things so if your level financially and that of your loved ones is going to change don't wait for time one day go better is an illusion it is your decision that will change it say amen so decide to be wealthy and you must make your decision a goal what is a goal a goal is a desire that you have set as a project you are ready to channel all your energy and your time to achieving it very important if you do not set goals you don't set a financial goal to be wealthy you will never be rich you will dream about it you will see yourself in a dream rich you will see yourself driving cars in a dream you will see yourself building houses it will never happen in your lifetime it will stop in the realm of dreams there how many people have dreamt of so many things they get up in the morning laughing and happy what happened they say my life must change what happened i had a dream in the dream i saw myself counting dollars i saw myself counting pounds in the dream i saw myself building a house for my father it will remain as a dream until you set it as a goal a goal enough to pursue it hallelujah and then the second the second key on how to be wealthy is that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance i jumped that and that's what we're going to discuss today and then number three under how to be wealthy i taught us the mental transitions that bring wealth remember i told us that people are categorized into three please listen follow very closely everywhere inside and outside 
I told us there are three kinds of people. Remember? As far as the distribution of wealth and mindset is concerned. Number one are people who have poverty mentality or poor mindset and naturally their poor physical reality. So their mindset and their physical realities are the same. Are we following please? Are you getting me? So here we have um, person A. His mindset is poor. His physical reality is poor. Number two, we have someone who has transited mentally. So he has a wealthy mentality, but his physical reality is still poor. Are we there? And then number three, the wealthy place now. We have someone whose mentality is the wealth mentality and his physical environment has now become his mindset. And I told us that every one of us can find our financial positions in these three illustrations. Most of us, really, most of us have poor physical realities. By poor, I don't mean you are begging for food, but there is that state of perpetual insufficiency where people think about money, they worry about money. Look at pastors, every service is money, 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 money. You can settle the issue of finance and face more important issues. Finance is not the most important issue. So it's better to handle it once and then you can do some other things. Very important. So here we have the guy who has a poor mentality and his physical environment. He thinks the reason why he's poor is because he was born from a, a poor family. That may have some elements of truth, but that may not be the reason why he's currently poor. Give this person money, something in his mindset will reduce him back. Please, are you following my example? Say amen. And then when he begins to transit mentally, right? We'll discuss that now. This guy begins to get the mindset of the rich. And all of a sudden, this environment starts pushing him away. Something in this environment starts pushing him because his mindset is changing. Now, at this point, level two, he has the mindset of the rich, but his physical condition is still of the poor. And I told you this is the most frustrating level in a man's life. Because when you talk to a rich man, he's impressed with your mindset. But then your physical reality is still like a poor man. So it's like you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty. But if you continue and you do what I'm about to show you shortly, you will move inevitably. No power in existence, I tell you, will stop you from stepping into the wealthy place. There is a place called the wealthy place. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We walk through water and through fire, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Hallelujah. So let's start off tonight's teaching. Thank you, Jesus. I will start tonight by examining the mindset of the rich versus the mindset of the poor. Write it very quickly. If you like, you can create a column into two. You can write one rich, the other one poor. Let's see how the rich think. Let's go into their minds and see how wealthy people think. Since we have established the fact that the prosperity of any man is not just from the physical money that comes, but the quality of his mental transition. There is a way that the wealthy think. There is a way that the rich think that brings financial resources to them. And there is a way that the poor think. Are you ready now? So we're going to be contrasting. And most of us are going to be seeing ourselves. We'll be seeing the mindsets that we have had, that we have preserved, that have been responsible for the poverty in our lives. And the goal is that as I teach, you begin to switch. Switch in your mind. The moment you see yourself in that category of the poor, you must begin to have a determination to change. Praise the Lord. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and i will follow you forward that's what he's doing in our minds right now you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you The first difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich believe in taking responsibility 
for the outcome of their lives while the poor believe in luck and chance so write it under the category of the rich write that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives they believe that they have a role to play in their wealth and financial abundance every wealthy man justly wealthy not crooks not corrupt people everyone justly wealthy especially in the kingdom they believe that they, there is a participation from their own end to determine the outcome of their lives if they are to get into the wealthy place they believe that they believe in taking responsibility over their financial destiny still the same point while the poor believe in luck and chance are you seeing i'm contrasting the mindsets now the poor believe in luck they believe in chance they believe in mother nature they hope that one day something will change they love that saying how can they we are poor because god wants it that way right they are the ones who teach oh god give them so that through them we'll get it's a devilish mentality don't ever use that kind of word again you are cursing yourself and cursing your destiny you disqualify yourself from receiving the blessings of the kingdom say amen so mindset number one the rich believe in taking responsibility say after me in the name of jesus i take responsibility for the outcome of my finances in the name of jesus i take responsibility for my financial destiny say in the name of jesus i stop blaming parents i stop blaming friends i stop blaming circumstances i take full responsibility for the outcome of my financial destiny the moment you get to that point you are beginning to be like the rich my brother did not give me the hundred thousand otherwise i would have bought more goods and then my shop would have expanded you are a liar that's not the reason leave your brother alone and leave him in peace he may have done you bad but that's not the reason the poor love passing responsibility they love it when they say no it's because of government no that's not the reason the flaw of government revealed a flaw in you that had been there see that number two the rich are very disciplined and patient people underline the word discipline and patience the rich are very disciplined and patient people while the poor are very indisciplined and very impatient financially speaking and generally speaking the poor are so careless careless over their financial resources they are not disciplined most people think the rich are the ones who do get rich quick things no no the poor are the ones who always want sharp sharp money they always want all kinds of things every wealthy man understands the place of discipline and patience hallelujah is a wealthy man that will be worth 10 million naira and he will still be taking bike because he's trying to build his wealth a wealthy man will be 10 million naira worth yet he's staying in one small room because he's building a poor man if he gets 100 or 1 million naira he will rent a house of 600 thousand buy a suit of 100 thousand and die with the remaining 400 thousand very impatient people and there is a pressure listen especially for us the young people there is so much pressure in our generation to prove that you are making it right the moment someone graduates everybody is saying so how far how far how far what is happening and then we try to look for all kinds of ways you kill yourself and buy a suit of hundred thousand and that's all your savings home and abroad you buy a watch of twenty five thousand buy a shoe of thirty thousand and where you stand the people you are talking to are so poor they don't even know the difference between a watch of two thousand and a watch of twenty five thousand so the effort to impress them has been wasted hallelujah 
the rich are very disciplined people very disciplined they don't waste money go to the restaurant and see the way the poor eat you will be shocked you will think they just won a lottery madam is there yes and you say bring it and they, they eat carelessly and foolishly and they spend all the money when their friends come in guy how far now i sit down sit down don't worry don't worry i'll arrange things for you this is a poor man look at what he's doing is that one is not just giving it's called financial carelessness are we learning something and then he finds out that money is running away from him perpetually number three the rich and wealthy believe in the law of process they believe in the law of process they know that it takes time to build wealth wealth true wealth and prosperity is a function of time the rich believe in the law of process the poor always want results without process that's why they get into all kinds of things that's why they are deceived and swindled around they get into all kinds of things because they are poor from the mind not from their business from the mind the poor like processes with they like results without process so you meet somebody around the park and the person calls you right like we have many in our in our society we've had so many stories of those people they call you around they act as though they are strangers or they send you an email you have just won two million us dollars or 10 million and you are not even afraid to read the mail you open it and smile and they write there they say don't tell anybody and you keep quiet you call your friend and say ah it's miracle service the prayer is it's not miracle service you are about to get into trouble how many people have been swindled of 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 their hard earned money because of getting into schemings let me tell you anything that does not subscribe to the law of process run away from it breakthrough comes instantly but preparation from that for that breakthrough takes time it is the manifestation that is instant not the preparation in one day you can become a millionaire but after a season of preparation are you getting the point now you don't prepare one day no sir no sir it took joseph one day to become a prime minister but it took him 12 years to prepare for that position. It took Moses one day to exit uh, the people out. Just one plague overnight. But it took him 40 years at the backside of the mountain. Hallelujah. It took Jesus three days, only three days to fulfill his assignment. He died, was buried, resurrected in three days. The plan of salvation was over. But it took him about 30 years to prepare so the rich where are we the rich believe in the law of process and the poor jump process right they jump a lot of process they want result sharp sharp someone just comes with a phone and say guy buy this phone now and you will sell it you didn't ask him where he got the money the person who is trying to sell the phone to you is looking like an armed robber and most likely he is and you are there because you want it sharp sharp may the lord deliver us from this sharp sharp mentality in the name of jesus christ never be under pressure to prove to people that I want to make it sharp sharp. You want to start a shop in one day. And you want to have 100 customers in one day. You want to start a restaurant in one day. And you want to be the leading. That's what has led men of God to witchcraft. They start a church and in one year. They want 5,000 members. In one year. The man wants protocol. In one year. He wants to go on air. In one year. He wants to have the best of sound. The best of church activity. So he will have to go and, and bow down. To some godless things how many people are in occults today many of our parents have joined fraternities and occults because they want sharp sharp money they join all kinds of clubs and societies that don't make sense they initiate them into godless things the rich and the wealthy the truly rich and the wealthy they know that it takes time 
it takes time it takes time warren buffett one of the well the world's wealthiest man i think he should be in his 70s or 80s right now a billionaire over 70 billion dollars worth or thereabout he started he knew what i'm teaching you now as early as age eight but it took him at least four or five decades are you seeing that the path to wealth can be accelerated but not rushed you can accelerate it god is the god of speed not rush he gives men speed but he does not rush men tarry in jerusalem as desperate as i want the gospel of the kingdom to reach the earth tarry in jerusalem until ye be endued with power say i receive grace to follow the due process that brings lasting wealth say it one more time i receive the grace to follow the due process hallelujah number four now the rich always plan and set goals the rich always plan and set goals while the poor are always impulsive and reactive always impulsive the rich always plan if they want to build they settle down like the bible says they count the cost how much will it take us to build okay it will take seven million how much do we have now? 200,000. It's nothing compared to what we want. What can 200,000 do right now? 200,000 can buy at least, we can buy four bags of cement and a few sharp sand. Come and pour it. Intimidate the devil with it. Put the cement there and pour the sand and go back home. You are taking a step. They plan. But the, the, the poor, they behave, they can go out in one day. I've said it again, many of our parents do that. In one day, they go back and come up with things they don't plan for. This is how the poor. Let a poor man enter a boutique. He just planned to go and get shoe. And his budget was 7,000. But he enters a boutique and the blue light is there. Everything is shining. And they say they just brought this. I mean, they just came from Italy. This is from Dubai. This is from Turkey. This is original. Touch it, feel it. And he's looking. Carelessness is about to happen right away. Because he's about to be erratic. He's under pressure. Tell about oh, guy, you don't pass this level now. And he says, oh yeah, how much, how much? He says, oh yeah, because of you. Bring 13K. He's paying. The, the 100,000 he took there was for something. But because there's no planning, he ended up buying something that was not, you bought a cloth that was not your size. You knew it was not your size, but they convinced you so much. The blue light made you to see it and you bought it. And you went home, you are angry with yourself, everybody, your friend. How about you are a bad friend, you didn't advise me. Whereas you were there bragging, feeling like a rich man. A wealthy man is not embarrassed. To tell you no this is not this is this is beyond my budget for now i will plan and i can come back there is nothing embarrassing say how about guy you you that you are staying in a 20 million naira house it tells you that's not the issue i work based on budget that's how the rich think poor people are always under pressure they just give you pocket money or you get your salary of of 30,000 and you are going and your plan is to go quietly to a restaurant where 500 naira can feed you somebody comes to push you to a restaurant that is bigger than your level and then you go there and while you are buying food you find some other people and they say ah your salary is there we will die with you here until you buy this and you end up spending half of your money have you seen that happen to our parents they collect salary and over the weekend the money is finished they think it's because the money is small the man was saying that when he was a primary staff, at a managerial level, weekend is still finishing his money because of that mindset. Always plan and set goals. Always plan and set goals. Don't be impulsive. Don't just do things because you have to do them. It's okay if you need to do them at that point and the reasons are justified. Otherwise, do not be embarrassed at all. Don't get into that pressure of pushing yourself to the wall. Set goals. 
set goals if you don't need a car don't buy it if you need only three trousers walk with three trousers there's no reason having hundred trousers with nothing in your pocket you flaunt trousers around and they look as if there's something in it and there's why not invest in your mind praise the lord i've told us again and again in this place stop trying to look rich pay the price and be rich there's nothing honorable about trying to look rich pay the price and be rich you can see a wealthy man especially here in the north you can see somebody who is a multi-millionaire and he can just wear his jalabia and wear his pants and just be smiling no pressure he can even enter a golf to the bank whereas the poor man collected loan of seven million bought a car of five million rented an apartment of two million and will spend the rest of his life paying that debt and the poor man just enters there's nothing and he just enters how are you you see him using a simple phone whereas somebody you ask the person how much is it in your your account 500 naira how much phone are you using 130 iphone what six you just bought it it just came out and you bought it nobody to communicate to because you don't have any any collection of rich sensible people who are you sending a mail to how is the mail going to increase your worth hallelujah say i refuse to be under pressure i set goals and i work with goals hallelujah number five the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones oh how powerful the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles very powerful psychological difference between the rich and the poor the rich every time they see challenges number one they never call them problems rich men never say problem they say challenges hallelujah and they see challenges as a stepping stone they see challenges and as an opportunity to learn more they see challenges as an opportunity to grow more but poor people let a poor man start a business and it crashes and you hear him regretting is you oh, that told me I've, I've always hated poultry i hate chickens i hate poultry they can die anyhow and the, the rich man says no my own i lost beds three times three sets i lost five thousand beds in one day and the poor I, I, I can't take that and they remain poor because they are unwilling to step out of their comfort zone the rich see challenges as opportunities look up please for a while how have you interpreted the challenges that have come in your life especially financial challenges hallelujah what is your interpretation of challenges do you see them as an opportunity to learn more, to know more, to access greater light? Or do you see them as stumbling blocks? There are many people today, many people today, they refuse to go and get jobs because one time they got a job and they fired everybody in the company and they have seen that challenge as an obstacle and they want to avoid that embarrassment. Whereas somebody who was poor kept applying, kept applying, and now the person is working in an oil company. Say after me, from today, I see challenges as an opportunity to learn, to improve, and to grow. I change my attitude. I change my response towards challenges. Very powerful. Two people can go through the same thing. The experience will make one wiser and better and wealthier another it will become the reason why he will never move forward hallelujah you ask your parents for instance why have you not set up something now they say look let me tell you you are a small boy that's why in 1970 is it two or three i can't remember exactly i think we did something like that and then your mother will concur yes we did something like that 
What did we even do? We started producing ice and nobody bought it. The ice will freeze there. They will take light. It will melt again. It will freeze there and the business packed up. And because of that, because of that, they have seen that challenge as an obstacle. They've seen it as a stumbling block. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to see challenges as obstacles. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunities. Please say it. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunity. Your attitude towards challenges is what will determine whether that challenge will kill you or you will rise above it. Two people can have a carryover. Two people can have carryovers. For one, he just looks and says, so this is how my life will end. So I'm truly dull. That thing they said is not a lie. I'm seeing the proof right in front of me. Whereas somebody looks and says, there's no problem. This is a challenge. I will come back and I will give it to life. Because of this thing, I will establish a university in the future. I'm on my way coming. I may cry right now, but I see it as an opportunity to rise. Whereas for somebody, he looks and says, if you like, call me a dollar, you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two people will be um, intimidated and, and, and affected by armed robbers. Armed robbers will come into a street and rob every house. Is that good? No. But I'm saying they rob the house. They seize jewelries, seize everything. Two years after that robbery, one family has renovated their house where they broke the glass. They have improved on it. The armed robbery gave them an opportunity to renovate the house. Have you seen people like that? The door that they broke, they now brought security doors. Whereas one neighbor is still angry, using banana leaves to cover the place where they did the stealing and still angry. You see him tie it and say, everybody that comes to the house, they come. This is where this idiot came and stole our money. Two years afterwards, he has seen that as an obstacle. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He has refused to move forward. Whereas one has used the opportunity to renovate his house. Your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will use them as ladders or they will become a load that will destroy you. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges someone was fired two people were fired for one it became the beginning of the tragedy of his life 10 years after being fired he became a miserable man turned into a miserable husband turned into a miserable father and 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 the list goes on and on for someone the moment they fired him he said no the owner of this company does not have two heads i will make up my mind and in three years he's already employing 100 people attitude I know so many people who were fired and they went back to their boss after two or three years. They said, thank you for firing me. It was the best thing that happened to me. The giant in me was sleeping. That, that, that firing letter did something to me. I got interested in the issue of finances. When they wanted to lock us in the prison when we could not pay the sound. Right? Sometimes... <laughs> Challenges can be a gift, brothers and sisters. It will shake you. The day the landlord says, come out! And he's packing your clothes out. And you're saying, oh God, don't embarrass me. I will go. But just wait. In the night, I will run and give you your key. And he says, no way. This morning, here and now, carry your pregnant wife and your twins and go out of my house. And you are now, you are embarrassed. And you are moving with your wife, pregnant and twins. And people are saying, look at irresponsible men. How can this man be twins and then the woman is still pregnant? Sometimes it will take you to the cave of Adulam, like David. And that's where you begin to sit down and say, look, something is wrong. I'm getting something wrong. Challenges really bring us to the place of destiny. They create defining moments in our lives. But your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will stay there or not. Hallelujah. It's God speaking to us. So the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor 
see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles number six are you getting blessed the rich have great courage and persistence the rich have great courage and persistence whereas the poor easily give up poor people easily give up they start a business it does not work they quit they start building a house it does not work they quit but the rich they are courageous people when one door closes they force another one to open when one strategy fails they start another one wealthy people are highly courageous people they are persistent very persistent hallelujah you can see somebody who is rich five years after he told you in the name of Jesus I'm coming out of poverty nothing has changed in his life but you come and meet him and his goal is still intact you laugh at him and say bros why are you fooling yourself just, just agree that it's not your turn to shine and the person will tell you I'm still reading the book five years from the time he made that decision he's still studying the books he's still growing he doesn't have a car yet but he's still growing he's still staying in the old house but he's still growing you knew him with that one trouser five years later on he's still wearing it but he's still growing that's a rich man his status will most certainly change what have you given up on god gave you the direction god gave you the grace but he never told you the road will be easy preachers lied to you that if you are anointed it will be a bed of roses preachers lied to you that if god is with you it will just be a walkover preachers lied to you that if you are anointed you will start a business and it will be flawless because the holy spirit is at work in your life that is a lie from the pit of hell failure is a prerequisite in the school of success you have nothing to tell me if you have not failed in life you have not earned the right to counsel me if you do not have a track record of failure what you see today as your failure will become your symbol of wealth it will become the throne that you will sit upon rich people have failed you cannot imagine you cannot imagine how many times they will start 10 businesses all of them will fail they will do a lot of things it will not work but persistence and courage when everybody is criticizing them they are busy working when everybody is saying why must you keep doing this eh if someone tries to ask two ladies out you ask the first one she says sorry i'm already engaged you ask the second one say no 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 god has already revealed my husband to me you are not the one after two opportunities you will never ask a lady again to get married to because you sit there and say kai me I, I can't, I'm not a fool. I can't be taking embarrassments like that. You will marry, oh, let me tell you in advance. If you don't take the courage to continue, ladies, shout continue. Every door cannot be closed. No, sir. One door will most certainly open. Hallelujah. Very important. Are you a courageous person? Are you persistent over your goals? Or do you just give up easily? I refuse to give up in the name of Jesus. You're a pastor here. You, you started a walk and it looks like nothing is happening and you are truly called, but you're about to give up. You're a businessman about to give up. You're a family man about to give up. Refuse to give up. And I tell you, at the other side of your pain, is celebration like a woman right when she goes in to deliver there are times she may want to give up and the midwives and the nurses are encouraging her and telling her don't worry don't worry say is it like that for every woman or is only me they say it's like that just just give up don't, don't give up for instance and then they continue motivating her and finally the baby is out sometimes she may need to go through cs as painful as it is the baby still comes the Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing. He said, for we will reap in due season if you faint not. But if you faint, you will not reap. Say, I refuse to faint. Let me give us two more and then we'll move to the formula for wealth. Hallelujah. Ready? Number seven. The rich are great risk takers. 
while the poor are always afraid to take risks wealthy people are great risk takers they step out of their comfort zone and they walk on water if i perish i perish if i fail i will learn from it if i succeed let god be praised poor people are the easy goers hey be careful though eh? you want to buy a golf and start a transport business somebody said you know the way nigeria is they will go and hijack your car somewhere have you not seen people minding their business and now robbers entered and carried the car from the garage and went with it the rich are great risk takers not foolish risk takers but great risk takers in 2010 when we were having the kingdom wealth summit i taught them that the spelling of faith in the world of finance is r i s k spell it r i s k when you are spelling faith in the finance world that's how it is spelled you must take risks you must take risks not foolish risks but you must take risks it's a risk to marry it's a risk to be single it's a risk to start a building project it's a risk to get a job don't you know it's a risk to transport yourself from here to Sabo every day for work is that not true you can have an accident something can happen god forbid but a crisis can break out something can happen that can affect you is it not a risk but it's a risk worth taking when you tell somebody you want to marry him is it not a risk you are willing to submit to a man whose ideologies you are not exactly you are not 100 percent sure of. you don't know what he can become yet you are willing to do that it's a risk life is a risk not taking a risk is a bigger risk you must take risks this ministry is a risk nobody gave us a guarantee that crowds will be inside and outside faith is spelled r-i-s-k when the people were setting up the sound in the morning none of you signed an agreement that by five o'clock you will be here none of you signed an agreement but it took courage we had to step out haven't prayed haven't fasted we have believed god and we're taking a risk miracle service is a risk you don't know who is coming with whatever sickness people can bring the dead people can bring anybody but you, you are willing to take that risk are you willing to take risks or you are part of the easy people when i was in secondary school there was a baby saloon called easy does it you do that for life you will fail oh just just take it easy don't don't do this customers didn't come today close your shop it's a sign that god is not with you who told you it's a sign that god is not with you it's a sign that you are growing it's only a witch as a baby who will just get up imagine that a woman gives birth to a child and he just stands up mommy where's the food that's a that's a wizard that's that's an illegitimate child that's that's a that's a, a breed between angels and men that's not a pure human being and jesus grew everybody say it jesus your king of kings he grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men if jesus grew you must grow hallelujah lastly number eight the difference between the rich and the poor the rich have a positive mental attitude please write write it write it down as fast as you can the rich have a positive mental attitude please pay attention to what i'm telling you because after this i'm about to teach you what i call the grand formula for wealth and abundance i give you a guarantee i give you a guarantee that anyone that diligently follows this even the dullest of us if you follow what i'm giving you you will be rich and rich does not mean buy a car buy a house that's survival the rich write it down please have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others the rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams 
the rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams while the poor are easily influenced the poor have a poor esteem of themselves the poor have a poor esteem of themselves and are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others the poor they fundamentally have a poor esteem of themselves and so when people begin to talk about them they are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others so many of us are here right now so many of us are here the opinions of people is what has stopped you from being rich what would they say what if i fail will they laugh at me the other time they saw me frying akara and the news spread around samaru so what so what about it have you forgotten that if you remain persistent those who laugh at you will laugh with you that the reason why they are laughing at you is because they are secretly intimidated by your persistence criticism is simply an opinion harshly expressed it's an opinion there are people today joshua selman is to them a great man of god that they love there are people today joshua selman is a devil and a fake man of god there are people joshua selman is whatever they want to call i learned by experience to ignore the opinion of others and to move forward if you follow what people say about your life they will kill you and ask others to come and see your dead body whether you do well they will talk about you whether you do bad they will talk about you they are still talking about jesus and we are still talking about satan everybody in between will be talked about so deliver yourself tonight in the name of jesus christ from the influence of the opinion of others they are spreading rumors around that i like money is it true no mind your business say see I heard that you are the one that said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. What? Look, let me tell you. Trying to defend yourself is the quickest way of trying, of, of giving people an impression like what they are saying is true. They now start using wise sayings like there's no smoke without fire. There can be smoke without fire. Ask those who smoke cigarettes. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Sing it one more time. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, I'm on my way. let them keep talking while you produce the results anybody can say what he wants to say about you please brothers and sisters hear me don't starve yourself of sleep because of what you think people are saying can i tell you something no matter what people say about you the world is full of troubles very soon they'll forget about your issue another issue will come and supersede your issue so you can as well let the sleeping dog lie are you getting what i'm saying now if a lady runs here right now and says this baby is joshua selman's baby i've told people i will only ask one question online how did you get pregnant online are you getting me not that i'll sit down and say hey, hey, hey i need to gather a committee now my reputation is at stake i'm a dead man already let the one who sent me defend him if he's comfortable with it fine and good ah i i will never stab myself sleep because he say, i called you i called you you didn't pick that's how all men of god are that's your opinion am i like that no so i go to bed let 
learn to frustrate useless opinions in your life ah mama this and that is a wicked woman every time we come to fresh water the way she looks at us are you wicked no so mind your business but you start running around the whole new extension telling everybody how about you my you know am i wicked is it not me that gave your child school fees no 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 save yourself all that nonsense rich people have a healthy mental attitude don't think they will not talk about you just like you have spoken about others let me assure you your turn is coming when you see someone gossiping and talking just pity him and nod your head because his own is coming good measure pressed down shaken together yes for sure you have not started a church and you are criticizing every man of god must it be like this must it be like that the day you start a church and for two months you are looking for one volunteer to be part of your ushering team at that point you will know it takes grace leadership wisdom and audacity when you see preachers preaching and you see men of god standing up to concord to what they are saying they can relate with it are you getting the point when you fast and pray the gentleman stood here to give testimony and he said it's not easy to stand here you would think it's easy to stand here and jump around until you come and stand here you wouldn't know whether you hold the mic with your left or right hand i once watched some a christian comedy show they were doing an auditioning for comedians these guys are supposed to be the funniest people in their various places and they came together and when they came together i was just looking i didn't laugh for one minute they were afraid their jokes disappeared archbishop benson idahosa said until you do what somebody has done twice don't talk about him after two years you mean this guy see has a small shop like this how about god don't fall our hand and then the day you open your own that looks like looks like a restaurant and you find out that nobody comes from morning till night you will do bonanza 50 percent nobody will still come at that point you go back to that bros and say bros you did try you well done say after me in the name of jesus i have a healthy mental attitude about myself and i refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dream say it i refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dreams they will talk about you they will laugh they will scorn you it's a sign you are making progress may your life not be so boring that your critics ignore you may your life be the news in their secret place that every time they are talking they say my god they are trying to criticize you but they are announcing you by extension so many people came for koinonia as a result of criticism they came to find out what is all this how can a young man be so anointed and when they came some of them from outside their headache disappeared when they crossed in and they sat down at the end of that meeting they have brought more than 50 people to koinonia criticism can be a great tool of publicity don't stop yourself from shining is god speaking to us Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance. Pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. hallelujah the day i found this key i shouted i not oyedepo's i will never be poor my own i shouted shouted where is the document let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till jesus returns ready write this down the formula for wealth and abundance i told you there is an exact formula there is an exact formula. Ready? 
Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive. Will always. Write always in capital letter. Will always. Be in exact proportion. The amount of money we receive. Will always. Be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do number two your ability open bracket your skill expertise proficiency and then you can close it your ability to do what you do. Your ability to do what you do. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Hmm. The amount of money, listen, listen. The amount of money we receive, this is a law. Please listen. I'm giving you a key that will set you free forever. The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do it. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Look at what you just wrote. The demand for what you do. Your ability to do what you do. And the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you. This is the grand key. The irrefutable law. When you break prosperity to its unit. The atom of prosperity is this. The amount of money Joshua Selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what I do. My ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me. The difficulty in getting another alternative to me. Let's take it one by one. Number one, the demand for what you do. This is the formula for wealth, brothers and sisters. I searched and I found it. Every millionaire I studied, every billionaire I studied, every wealthy family, every wealthy church, every wealthy business subscribe to this formula. The amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me, the amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do, your ability to do what you do, and the difficulty in replacing you. Write this down. Never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it. Never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it. This is what makes a lot of people fail financially. You are answering a question nobody is asking. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? 
Look at this. Look at this. If if this is my business for instance the level to which I will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this. Is that true? If there is no demand for this who will pay you for it? Nobody. So many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide. The first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it. If there are no children in a place, why will you sell pampas? There is no demand for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never try to start a business. When you want to get a job, trust God to get a job in a place, a corporation, a firm, where there is a demand for their service. Nitel in Nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service. Are you seeing that now? When there was a demand, what happened? They were rich. They had money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Typewriters. Those who sell typewriters today, if they did not change, will they be rich? Because there is no more demand. Never try to provide any service when there is no demand. This is the reason why ministers have their churches full. Because there is a demand for what they are giving. They think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel. Hear me, Koinonia. This crowd, inside and outside, is here tonight because there is a demand. Are you getting what I'm saying? This ministry is excelling, not just because God called us. God called us, yes, but we are responding to a demand. For as long as there is a demand for my anointing, I remain relevant. For as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that I teach, they will continue to be relevant. The amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion not to what you do, the demand for it. You started a business, you never found out whether there was a demand for it. That's why when wealthy people are about to come to Africa and start businesses, the first thing they do is they send envoys, representatives, to come and give them statistics. They are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand. They will never come to Africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail, they will still succeed. That's how the wealthy think. Is God speaking to us? Write this down. Continue the points that you wrote at first. You either create a demand first. When you want to provide any kind of service, spiritual, financial, educational, whatever, you must either create a demand for it first. Open bracket. Through exposure, orientation, and advertisement. You either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand. Look up, please. Okay, write, write it down and look up. You either create a demand for what you want to offer. That means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it. Let me tell you something. Look up. This is the key behind the wealth of Igbo people. I'm not being biased. An Igbo man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for. That's the reason why when others are running away somewhere, he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there. Unconsciously, unconsciously, many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling. Asad, Asad, when the phones come into Nigeria, It depends on which one you are talking about. Generally, Nitel had one thing like that. What our protocol used now, right? That's how it started. Now, watch this. Did you know that until phones came, 
in terms, I mean, our wireless mobile communication now. Until phones came, we, we had that one that you dial, right? You touch it, and then it goes back. You continue, and then it goes back. 73142, and then your state code. You, you remember that, right? Watch this. Some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology, and they said, no, we have something to offer. And this is what they said. These people do not know about that possibility. So we use advertisement to create a demand. When they brought out Indomie in Nigeria, what happened? They use advertisement and you are watching. They show a beautiful lady and she picks up the, the Indomie and she's taking it and you are just celebrating. What they are doing is they are creating a demand. Immediately after that, you say, eh, please go and buy me um, this and that and that. They create a demand for it. Or they meet an existing demand. Write this down. Always respond to demands and you will be rich. Respond to demands. I think it was the last school of ministry students. I was teaching them on finance in school of ministry. And I told them if I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I won't sell pure water. If I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I will do mobile toilets. Is there a demand for it? You are joking. You are joking. Sooner or later, no matter how bold you stand, you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m. in the afternoon for a night vigil. Abba, you will need to ease yourself. And I won't be there. You will even know it's my own. But you just see me smiling. The goodness of God. As they are worshiping, I will lift my hands. Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand. So I look for the demand. What are they looking for so desperately that they will be willing to do anything? May God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground. You will demand my service a thousand times. And that's good for me. That's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want. As far as my business is concerned. It may look messy, but forget the money is not dirty. You don't defecate on the money. Right? Are you learning something tonight? When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming, I want to give you a secret. A big secret right now. Many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class. When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high, listen, your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes. Let me explain to you what I mean. There is a way, there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up, the demand is too high that you become too big to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. Look at this. How many days did fuel go off in Nigeria? I mean, I know there's still there are still pieces of scarcity, but remember the time when all the marketers went. Within 72 hours, Nigeria lost billions. It literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy. Is that true? Huge demand for energy. There are certain values that when you provide, it becomes almost, humanly speaking, impossible to fail because the demand is, is, is overwhelming. Pure water. Pure water will never fail in Nigeria till Jesus comes. For as long as there is sun, there will be need for it. We drink water like camels in Nigeria. You finish one bag of have you seen people take water somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange take another one take another one that's money going five five naira or ten naira if it's cold right and 15 naira just disappeared right now bam, 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 bam. and the person selling it is smiling and the person consuming it is paying
every day you must bath at least i believe yes you should bath i'm speaking to the wider audience not just you there are thousands of people full right so the demand for soap will never stop and the demand is so high every day somebody's birthday photographers will never run out are you getting me restaurants will never pack out if they pack out it's a demonic thing because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day if you are busy or you don't have money at least once if you are fasting that's all right praise god i'm showing you that so many people are poor because they have not responded to demands those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself it's a law whatever you cannot do guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves always write this down please let's hurry up always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it i repeat always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it The amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand the demand watch this let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand watch this as a man of god do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest because there is a high demand for that grace are you getting me there is a high demand usually the largest crowds come during the miracle service there are people who because of distance cannot come for every service but during the miracle service they will pay the price and come hallelujah because there is a demand so if the demand for this anointing continues koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher are you getting what i'm saying now is there a demand for what you do or are you just doing it have you ascertained that there is a demand the office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed never try to answer a question nobody is asking the second point your ability to do what you do we said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability, your skill, your expertise. Ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do. Skill and ability. There is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance. Please never forget this. There is a direct relationship between skill, between expertise, between competence and proficiency and financial abundance. It's not enough to be anointed. It's not enough to have something to say or just to talk. There must be skill. There must be skill. You are enjoying what he's playing. Because although we're in a spiritual house, there is skill. You see that? I'm preaching. You think I'm just talking until I break down the psychological implication of the things I'm saying. And you see all the things that are interplaying. In the midst of my sermon, you are laughing. In the midst of my sermon, I'm rebuking you. In the midst of my sermon, I'm challenging you. All of this requires skill. It's not just anointing. Are you getting what I'm saying? your ability to do what you do i love how some people that peel orange have you seen those people that sell orange 
they are so flawless you bring orange to them and you see them talking they're just talking and peeling it when you see a master do something it becomes flawless that's how you must be if you want to be rich don't think rich people are dafts rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise we pray in tongues we fast but organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it they think it's carnal they think it's not spiritual so the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people you enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them and so they throw you out of that place you speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground there is a lot of skill and proficiency to it if you think it's so easy try it and you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger that's why you won't know what to say again you will know that it's not just about cracking jokes there is a skill not just a spirit the bible says and david led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands david did not throw goliath just through the anointing it took skill the benjamites theologically speaking they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows in other words you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it they were that skilled so don't you think god just came upon this guy samson was not just anointed alone he was skilled bezalel have you read about bezalel the spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him the three hebrew boys the bible says and in all the matters that they were tested in they were found 10 times better how many times in what you do do you have ability or just desire you set up a restaurant nobody likes your food something is wrong there is a demand for it but there is no skill and you think it's demons you are fasting and running around your parlor whereas you should go and settle down and meet a ketra not a mediocre a ketra buy the truth it will cost you buy the truth wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something you would think it's a waste you are paying somebody one million just to talk to you but they value it that much how many believers can pay for knowledge they don't want to they just want to receive average and so they remain mediocre is God speaking to us it takes skill what he's playing he didn't just learn it by the anointing an anointing came upon his skill the fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice what skill are you lifting up to God to anoint he said he will anoint the works of your hands I'm not just talking of business I'm talking of skillful business see yet thou a man diligent 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 skillful many preachers are not skillful many business people are not skillful many employers and employees are not skillful skill is not just an impartation it is learned it is learned it will cost you you will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn but are you willing everybody say ability i made a vow in my life that everything every service and every value I want to offer my generation, I will be a master in it. Let me tell you, as you see me like this, don't, don't let these suits and all these things deceive you. I'm such a workaholic, you would not like my life. You will like me when you see me on suit standing. If you come close to me, you will run away from me because my life is irritating. There's no room for laziness whatsoever. There are things I do every day no matter how much I'm tired. Do you think preparing for this, you don't want to know how many books were read. You don't know how many books I read. 
how many materials I consult to just bring one message. One message that you just hear for two hours. You don't become wealthy when you are lazy. If you must bring facts. How many videos I've downloaded on YouTube. Listen to them in fasting and prayer. Converted them to MP3s to listen to them. Listen to three hours, six hours videos and summarize them in major points. Work on them. Edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it. That's hard work, brother. And all that is for one sermon that you just receive and say, wow, the sermon is impressive. Are you getting what I'm saying? I returned back. We, we went to Peter on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I was there. On Monday, Tuesday, I passed through Abuja to Kogi State to go and greet the family of, of our dear one who transited. And from there, I returned. The school of ministry students were there. I think it was, it was yesterday, right? I returned. As I returned, I just went to take my bath and rush. We were here having lectures from 6 to about past 10. I had barely rested when I got up. And then I had to plan, do a lot of things, had to run to town see a few people this afternoon i am here first thing tomorrow morning i'm off to kaduna we have a meeting in kaduna from kaduna we're passing straight to kano for an evening meeting sunday we are back three o'clock on the dot there is lecture school of ministry monday there is counseling from morning till night and next week is my birthday hello don't you ever hold on don't talk we'll talk about birthday after the service if you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money, change your mind tonight. You don't know how hard they work. There are people, 6 o'clock, their shops are open. They close past 12. There are others who open to 12 and they close to 7. Skill. Diligence. You get up and you say you're a motivational speaker. And they ask you what is success. You say, according to Brian Tracy, according to you, what is it? You get up and you're a preacher. And all you're doing is copying and pasting messages. As you're preaching, they'll help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from. And they will tell you the site you downloaded. No originality. It takes skill. You think it's easy to, to buttress points. I can communicate any point and sing a song to support it listen it's not just anointing it is skill right you know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well you just know every time you hear them you are kneeling down find out how many things are out of bound for them things they love so much he that desires mastery is temperate in all things what are you willing to give up to be skillful? Don't just say, ah, apostle is blessed. Kai Koinonia is lucky. Oh. Wait until you see our leadership trainings. Wait and see the, 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 the workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders. Wait and see the way we build them. You come and see the, the various departments. You think these guys are just standing by default? Look at the ushers standing and position. They have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing. Go for a meeting somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves. But you, before you get to the ground, somebody has come to hold you. It's a skill. Because they are holding people who are bigger than them. There is a skill. We are that meticulous. So don't just say God is prospering koinonia. Guys, we are blessed. We are blessed through skill. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere. Skill and expertise is the, key, is the key to promotion and increased salary. You see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss. Tell him be skillful. Be skillful then you can pray. Stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful. Let me tell you something. I humorously tell people. If I'm your boss and you are not skillful, I can be a good pastor to you, but I'll fire you. And I'll fire you because I'm a serious Christian. Hallelujah. I will never entertain a worker in church, for instance. I mean, 
maybe there is I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere and you think because we are members of koinonia you are not serious you will never get the job never get the job i don't do all those kinds of things say remember we are from the same place whether we are from the same room if you have not demonstrated the skill if you are so much of a liability for me i will bless you with direct money so that you will go but not to commit things to you he gave unto some five some two and one according to their several ability not their prayer request their ability their ability i hammer it on the workers to be skillful and it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice you must become skillful at something you must become an expert in something. You can't become jack of all trades and master of none. You have to lay your hands on something. Be a master in it. And I guarantee you, you're on your way to the wealthy place. You see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on? Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological an intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand write it down demand for your service is not enough you must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand the person who babs me is here in koinonia he's so skillful i love him so much and he babs me no matter how you love me, I will not submit my head to you to play around with. I don't have that luxury. I love you. I can, I can, I can help you. I can teach you. But I won't do that. How many people are not skillful in what they do? We are prayerful, but we are not skillful. Say, I receive grace to be skillful. Let me tell you the truth. Skill is an asset. Skill is an asset if this guy is so broke if he is so broke today that nothing moves all he needs to do is go to a hotel in Abuja just ask for permission to sit somewhere and then he will begin to play and someone will see him and say can you come and play for one program what's your cost and he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill the next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill not at the mercy of God alone, at the mercy of your skill. Man of God, your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry. Your leadership skill, your financial intelligence, what you are receiving right now, there are people standing outside, no seats for them. There are people looking through the window. They are passionate to receive that skill. And I guarantee you, in a short time, their lives will show meditate on these things the bible says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all there is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful it's a combination of grace and power anointed and skillful not only that you are anointed to sing you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional you are a businessman you are not just a businessman offering services you are exceptionally skilled when your contemporaries look at you they name you after your competence you walk in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill even your enemies will recommend you and say please promote this guy we hate him but there is nobody in this company who can do it as him i gave you a story of somebody in this country he works three jobs. Three jobs. And he works only three times in a week. He's so skillful. He's the brain behind many successful companies in Nigeria. I will not mention the names of the companies. You'll be surprised. They beg him. He works only three times. Three times in a week. And the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is 500000 Minimum. And he works only three times skill will defy race skill will defy gender skill will defy age if you are skillful the world will honor you that's why wole soinka 
received a Nobel Prize. Nobody said you are from Africa. That's why Zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people. Skill defies age. I'm giving you a key. If you sit down in mediocrity, you will beg for bread. I choose to be skillful in every area. I choose to be exceptional. I avoid premature manifestation. While others are running, let them run. I will stay back and I will sharpen the knife. You are a drummer, be skillful. I've hammered on these guys. You don't want to know how skillful these guys are. I've seen their diligence. Our technical people, we emphasize skill, not just anointing brothers and sisters. It takes skill. It takes skill. It takes skill. The difference between CNN or BBC and one Christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill. It's not anointing. You watch some channels and you are angry. You are angry. Did they have to do it this way? They want cheap labor. Rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this, they refuse. They say there's one brother who offered to help us. And they remain in mediocrity to their detriment. Powerful message from the throne. But nobody can listen. Many people try to write books. And they don't consult with people. They bring out a book that is. The message is deep. But the skill, the artistry in writing it is not there. T.D. Jakes wrote one skillful book. Woman thou art loose. And he made four million dollars from one book. Four million dollars. Multiply that by 210. And it will give you the Naira equivalent. One man's skill. Build him out of poverty. One skill. You have written 10 books. Nobody even knows. Because you wrote every, you wrote like you are talking. They didn't teach you that there is a skill. You stood somewhere and you sang a song. And the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again. Were they blessed? Yes. Were they embarrassed? Yes. Why? You had anointing without skill. You had access to cook for a millionaire. You would have been his personal chef. You blew that moment. You were praying in tongues in the kitchen, but there was no skill. The food burned. Everything went wrong. Skill. Papa Adeboye said this himself. He said when the redeemed campground started, he said that they, they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place. They were more focused on the spiritual impact. So people would come, CEOs, managers, billionaires will come and sit down and heat will, will disturb them and it was making everything uncomfortable and God spoke to him and he said a CEO has AC in his office in his jeep he has AC in his parlor, bedroom, kitchen everywhere there is AC and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me i have seen the fruit of skill in my life i have seen it exceptionally as i travel to go for meetings i not only see the beauty of anointing i see the excellency of being skillful the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Skillfully dividing it. When I go for meetings, we go together with the protocol and the worship people. And I watch them as they look at me. When they say, let's now welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. And people are clapping. I'm happy because I have the skill. There's nothing you can do about it. I have it. I paid the price and God gave it. I am grateful, but I'm not apologetic about it. I know the people are going to be wow. Just give me 10 minutes of audience and I will shock you. That's all I need. And when I pick up the mic, I know what to do. With wise counsel, make war. I know that at the end of that meeting, somebody will invite me again. It's not pride. It's the truth. You can be that confident. Skill. 
least when you go back home throughout this week, some of you as you go home, just sit down and think of your life. Please, don't be in a hurry to sleep. You've been sleeping for years. Wake up this night and think. And say, look at how I've been playing with the opportunities God has been giving. Everything you do, nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful. They ask you to supply clothes. You supplied nonsense. You packaged it in a rubbish way. You delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way. And they vowed not to give you that opportunity again. We're on our way to better days. Now you can sing the song well. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a song. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Yesterday when I was coming from Abuja, a woman met me. And then when she met me, she wanted me to talk to her on some things. I spoke to her on a few things. And when I was talking to her, this woman was looking at me. And she said, what kind of human being are you? Where are you getting this? And I was on my way going. I said, on my way, I'm on my way rushing. And she said, please, can you give me a minute? And she ran to her room. And this woman brought out an envelope with dollars said take i said no, no 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 what is this please no no i'm not i'm not ready and she squeezed it into somebody and i said this is somebody's salary for how many months the gift of a man the skill of a man i don't talk too much about my private life but i just want to challenge you a bit it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you getting what i'm saying i hardly buy things for myself people bring it in honor skill do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you? Yes, you may be born in Nazareth, but don't die in Nazareth. You may be born in Nazareth. God is speaking to someone here. They think you are a non-entity, but may your skill prove them wrong. May your exceptional qualities prove them wrong. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Write this word down. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. Write this down. When your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage, whatever you want to call it, when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult, right? When your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you, you will be very wealthy. Yeah, you will. When your uniqueness or your strategy or as we call it in the business world, your competitive advantage when it is so unique that it stands you out. You can get another Joshua Selman, but not easily. See that? There are many preachers, but there is only one Joshua Selman. There are many anointed men, but there is one Joshua Selman. No man can clone the grace. No man can, close the, can clone the skill. No man can clone the uniqueness. So you carve a niche that is free of competition. You carve a niche that is free of intimidation. You stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness because it's not easy to find a replacement. If you are easily replaceable, it's a sign that you will be broke. Let me tell you how you know you are not valued. Your absence is easily forgotten and ignored. When your absence is easily forgotten, when your absence is unnoticed, it's a sign that your impact is small. Yeah. 
if I come to work in your company, even if it is one day, I will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it. It's called value. The amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you. When there is no alternative to you, they will pay whatever price. You will name your price. You will name your price. Hallelujah. I have taught people these things. It's difficult to get another mic. These guys are all skillful. It's difficult to get another Elijah. It's difficult to get them. No, they are all unique. David Dam is here. Come. All these guys you see, they are skilled people, but they have their uniqueness. There is a way David Dam is so unique, you cannot clone him, no matter what happens. There is a way Sam comes on stage, and you know he's in a class of his own. What do you have in your life that truthfully you can say, when it comes to this, God has put me in a class? Void of competition. Some of you, it's only trouble that you're in a class of your own. Gossiping. All these bad, bad things that are bad, bad qualities. That's what you are in a class of your own. Tonight, change. Everybody is selling. But there is a way you do yours. The day you don't open your shop, people come and there are five shops open, but they are waiting for you. They say, Abba, can't you buy? Say, mm. There is, I like that smile. There is a unique touch to what you do. There is a way you do what you do. You are the happiest staff in your corporation. The day you don't come, the entire workforce is gloomy. They are, they are sad. They miss you. Some of you, nobody is missing you right now. It's bad. It's bad. It's a serious issue. Think about it. Nobody is missing what you are giving. ATC called me this morning and they said, they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? It's a serious question. I'm not intimidating you. Who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you? You are saying there is no money. There are people they are chasing with money. People bless me every day. I say it in, with all humility. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. When you are not easily replaceable, you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business. They need your news to remain relevant. Even your enemies desire you to continue. Are you that unique? Or you are just general? I'm a general businessman general talkative what do you sell television what is unique about why should i come and buy tv from you and not from someone else do you have that uniqueness what do you do i plot who have you plotted many people what is your uniqueness is it that you plot on time is it that you plot well is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot what is your uniqueness I refuse to be easily replaceable. I refuse it. Pray that prayer in one minute. I refuse it. Please pray. I'm showing you a key. We're not done yet. But I just want you to pray it. And then we'll do an evaluation quickly and we're out. Pray. They have belittled you because you are easily replaceable. You have refused to work on yourself. Money is available, I tell you. Money is available. The millions are available. You are not yet unique enough to be rich. You have not qualified for the world. You are grumbling about it. You are complaining. For five years, you are still at that lower level. Somebody came, a fresh graduate. You paid his school fees. He's now your boss. To what degree are you easily replaceable? Pray. Lord, may I be so unique that I become an asset, an asset to all and sundry. May my absence create a vacuum that cannot be easily filled. I'm ready to pay the price to be that unique. 
world class not a local champion you may start small but you hold on to strong convictions convictions that nothing will bend not cultural barriers convictions that nothing will bend not the limitations of your past convictions that nothing will bend pray an award-winning banker exceptional an award-winning ceo an award-winning man of god so anointed so unique you become a standard you become a leader you become a reference it's not a gift it's a reward it's not a gift hallelujah do this and in one day you will get what somebody will get in a lifetime somebody who earns hundred thousand per month how much is that per year how much is that per year 1.2 million how much is that in 20 years 24 million someone can give it to you in one day as a reward to your uniqueness the lifetime one day my father looked at me and said you are an old man you are a young man with gray hair what sort of person are you may people look at you like Jesus and say what wisdom is this they look at you and wonder they don't know what to say about you let me tell you something stop responding to your critics the only response you give your critics is greater results greater results let them keep talking the gap will be too wide they will be forced to shut up continue moving let me tell you what you are seeing in ministry right now the level of excellence and the anointing is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will show you what i'm doing today in my mind i've left this level no i've left this level i've left this level gentiles this is what will make gentiles come to your light and kings to their brightness millionaires will come and they will queue up they will queue up one woman asked me a question she said my son how come people come for counseling hundreds of people and they sit down from morning till night just to talk to you for two minutes and five minutes i didn't know what to tell her i said it's the same reason why a baba or a rich man will run backward to see a herbalist and the herbalist said turn back and he will turn back he knows what he's looking for when you hold the keys to the door they will look for you they will beg for you they will pay you to open the door oh i found my way out of poverty i found my way out i found my way out there is an eternal demand for what i do i will never run out of relevance there is an eternal demand for as long as there is one soul that is not yet saved there is a demand for as long as there is one sick body that is not healed there is a demand for as long as there is one person one family under oppression i will be needed for as long as there are people who need to be taught the principles of the kingdom i will be needed the, the, we are an endangered species a million of me is still not enough to fulfill the demand You say you are a leader how uncommon are you one time i went to speak in a, a a small business leadership conference and i sat quietly there were bank managers and people everybody came and was just bragging and talking stories and speaking rubbish i was very disappointed in all humility because i had high expectations for them i didn't know how much i had worked on myself they spoke and everybody spoke nonsense and i came out when i spoke brothers and sisters I tell you the truth and I, I lie not I do not know how many complimentary cards and all of that and all of that and they were talking and I looked I said on a good day I will go to their offices and they will drive me out now they are following me with complimentary cards stop following success attract it through your diligence stop chasing money attract it through your skill stop chasing money pay the price and you will drive it away and it will refuse to go
it is for this very reason that doctors lawyers engineers soldiers are very rich this very reason those we call professionals this is why because of um they are the kind of work they do requires a lot of skill right their professions require a lot of skill that cannot be learned informally and then they require public licensing and authorizations to function so it limits the number of people that can imitate them that's why they are rich if you've ever wondered why doctors are rich engineers architects and all of the people that do what we call professional courses is because there are licenses and to get the licenses and authorizations you need to pass through something and not everybody can do that so they are few and the demand for what they have is so high and they can set any price any price may you be so powerful that you can name your price and people will still pay you and say thank you for helping us the same way you queue in a filling station you are going to use your money to pay for the fuel but you will say thank you because it's so much in demand there is none of you under the sound of my voice who will walk what i'm telling you and will not be rich no not one write a few things down we're rounding up number one you do not seek money directly write this point it's wrong i'm looking for money is an error you will never find it it's not missing you don't look for money directly money like health and happiness is an effect it's a byproduct you don't look for it directly you don't look for happiness directly you look for the things that bring happiness right you don't look for health directly you eat well and it produces health so you don't look for money directly money is an effect responding to a cause money is a byproduct of carrying out a formula stop looking for money you attract it i'm looking for money you will never find it never find You may not like me tonight but you will tell me thank you tomorrow when you become a billionaire and your colleagues look at you and say Hapa, didn't we school together you say but we didn't hear the same thing hallelujah you only set it as a goal and then you seek to provide services and solutions to increase your skill and bring it into your life i'm summarizing to you right now Two ways you get rich number one you get rich by increasing or improving the service that you offer you need to sit down and birth ideas for bigger services what is a better way to do this you need strategies so i'm still buttressing on the first point you need to increase the services whatever it is that you render I'm telling you the truth repent of that cause for that that thinking and that ideology of trying to get something for nothing listen you can come and meet me today you can tell me your problems I can talk to you and I can pray with you there may be financial problems I will look at you I may give you minerals or malt or apples or whatever and tell you God bless you but I will be willing to carry one million and give somebody who can solve my problem i was always willing to give you were not willing to receive are you getting that many people you come to many people's houses to beg for money they will not give you money but they will carry 1.5 on their way to the bank on monday to go and deposit it the money is always there you don't get it by begging you get it by offering service if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions valuable service will give you the keys to the wealth of people i have met billionaires i have met millionaires i'm shocked and surprised to see the way they honor me 
and respect me and respect koinonia there is a woman she's a billionaire she jogs with koinonia messages every day she's passionate about me i was with her yesterday and i was amazed do you know how valuable you can be the people you are admiring today will admire you if you do what i'm telling you to do they will admire you there are people who i used to call sir before Today, I've met them. I still recognize them, but they don't recognize me. Many of the people who criticized me in the past have come for counseling today. And they never knew that I was the one they were criticizing. They came and waited for hours. And when they entered, I said, man of God, it's a privilege. I've been hearing about you. And like Joseph, I said, God bless you. How can I help you? And they say everything there. Many of them criticized and said all kinds of things. But their children recommended them to come. And now they keep, they are now seeing the son of man in power and glory. Oh, then he was a shepherd boy in Nazareth. Why will you remain this way after this teaching? I will weep. You saw me, I sat down here and I was, I was almost, almost shedding tears, honestly. I'm not an emotional person at all, but there is a very soft side to me. Because when I sat down, I was praying while the worship team was ministering. I said, Lord, will your people respect what I will tell them? Or must they suffer to a point that their lives are almost becoming miserable before they receive it? Many of you are doing well. Parents are helping you. You are not taking care of your finances. And so you may have very little value for what I'm sharing. Until the day you get married and you find out that you are the one who is the breadwinner. That's when you go and check the dictionary and find out the meaning of the word breadwinner. It means the absolute provider unassisted absolute provider and then you will now review this message again but the earlier you start the faster for you hallelujah the earlier you start the faster for you and then you increase your skill i told you you get rich by increasing your service and then you increase your skill in what you currently do. Even if it's to get a job. There's part three of this. And in that one, I'll be teaching you multiple streams of income. I'll be teaching you certain things. The ocean never dries because every stream flows to it. Hmm. I will show you the mystery of Genesis chapter one. The secret of unlimited abundance and there was a river that went out of Eden and parted itself into four I'll be teaching you on multiple streams of income the key to Oshonic wealth the very key ordinarily I'm supposed to stop here but then we'll go the extra mile because I hope that this becomes my contribution to your finances that what our parents did not get we are getting so that you are not without any excuse. Then you can sing that your status is changing. It no longer will become a cliche. You become magnetic. Absolutely magnetic. It will look like a charm. But money will look for you. Wherever you go. Personal evaluation. Write this. This is an evaluation for you to go and work on. Just three questions I'm about to ask you. Okay, I'll give you five. Ready? Number one, just write personal evaluations. These are questions that you answer. We're out of time so that we can pray. Sorry, we're taking a bit of time, but I think this is, this is worth it, right? Number one, what are the major solutions or value or service I provide? That's the first question you are going to ask yourself. Write it down. Be absolutely clear about it. What are the major solutions? What is the major value? What are the major services that I provide as a person? As a man of God, I provide spiritual solutions, for instance. That's what I do. As a man of God, I, I'm not just a preacher. I provide spiritual solutions. Right? And I know the exact solutions I provide. I'm bringing people to the point of intimacy and passion for God. 
That's a spiritual solution, right? I'm helping them to comprehend the principles of the kingdom. I'm offering spiritual solutions using the word of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's the value that I'm giving to you. So I'm a businessman. This is my product. I'm giving you valuable service. A spiritual solution. I'm connecting you. I'm bringing you to closer intimacy with God. And I'm teaching you the principles of the kingdom that guarantee for a victorious life and a purposeful life. That's value I'm adding to you. And then I'm, I'm solving solutions. I, I mean, I'm providing solutions and solving problems supernaturally. On Friday is going to be miracle service. Another reign of miracles and the anointing of the spirit. That's a spiritual solution. There are people who are coming barren. I spoke to a woman. Eight years barren. Next week she's coming and her, her problem will end. That's a spiritual solution. Somebody is coming who has been buffeted by darkness. And light will come. Spiritual solution. This is why I will remain blessed. It's not because I'm preaching the gospel. It's because I'm giving something. Are you seeing that now? This is why preachers are rich. This is why preachers are rich. I refuse to celebrate my birthday. Many people have been asking, why don't you celebrate your birthday? I will celebrate my birthday. Birthday is not the day you were born. It's a celebration of the reason why you were born. I will begin to celebrate my birthday when I feel satisfied that I'm truly impacting lives. It's not just about cutting cake and smiling. It's about many people saying, thank God you were born. Mm. Then you can celebrate it indeed. Question two. Is there a demand for the solution I am providing? Question. So question one, what is the value? What are you providing? If you are working in an office, what are you giving? Really? Really? What are they paying you for? You must know it. Don't just say they are paying me 10,000. No. If you know what they are paying you for, you can increase your salary by increasing what they are paying you for. You don't increase your salary by going to your director and say, increase my pay. No. When you increase your skill, your service, you are paid. Number two, is there a demand for the solutions I'm providing? Still on number two. If yes, how great and sustainable is that demand meaning what you are providing whether as an employer as a businessman as an entrepreneur as a leader as a man of god whatever it is is there a demand for what you are providing and if yes how sustainable is that demand will it fade with time there is no amount of civilization that will make what i'm doing go extinct i'm so happy for being a pastor I'm so happy for being a preacher. I'm so happy for being a man of God. Because the more civilization comes, the more we are needed. You will never kick us out. We have come to stay. Praise the Lord. Doctors will never go out of extinct. Because darkness will cover the earth. People will be sick. Women are getting pregnant every day. Women are giving birth every day somebody is having a headache somebody is breaking the laws of health every day the disobedience of men will keep medicine alive until jesus comes the military will keep reigning wicked people will continue careless people will continue and so the military will never go out is there a demand for what you have to offer and if there is how sustainable is it so that you know whether you should build your life around it or stop wasting your time. It is painful to build your life around a service and then it no longer becomes needed. And you are left there despondent. Number three. Do I possess all the skill and expertise required in providing the above solutions? Okay, so it is true now that you have identified what you are doing. The service, the valuable service right and you have seen that there is a demand the third question is do i possess all the skill required in providing the above solutions you can put in bracket am i aware of all the skills required in the first place you are a preacher are you aware of all the skills required in preaching well or you are just carrying the mic and moving around are you aware and if you are aware, have you cultivated them? 
as a businessman have you cultivated your communication skills your people skills your leadership skills right have you mastered goal setting have you mastered the principles of execution have you learned how to coordinate people have you learned how to develop a team spirit in people have you learned how to motivate people to achieve a common goal have you learned that do you have financial intelligence what do you understand about accounting and documentation and auditing? Have you gone that far to know anything about it? Have you learned how to, to motivate people when they do not have courage? Or are you just a businessman, a CEO, moving around with complimentary cards, packaging with no content? As an employee, are you so skilled? Are you so skilled? Do you know your onions well? Can you do your stuff so well? Number four. Number four. Write two things. Just two. Write two things that you can do daily be, to become exceptional in your field. Two things. Write two things. There are many things you can do. But write two things. What two things can you do daily from this night to start improving yourself in the area where you see God taking you to. If it's as a man of God, what two things will you do every day? As a businessman, what two things will you do every day? As an entrepreneur, as a leader, right? What two things do you think you can do every day to improve on yourself? Five. Write down three major ideas that have come to your mind and you think will be in high demand write three ideas there must have been ideas in your mind especially when you were growing up before you were aware of wickedness before you were aware of the vicissitudes of life that kill the dreams of people write down these three ideas that you have so passionately pursued in your life that you so passionately desire and you know they will be in high demand ministerially entrepreneurial um, and all of that write it and then pick one of them just one and start working on it ideas are like a vehicle you can only get to one location at a time you can go everywhere with it but not everywhere at a time pick one 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 and start working on Many of us are doing too many things. That's why you don't succeed. Too many things. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. You just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Prove that you believe in resurrection. By rolling away the stone. Two things men did. They rolled away the stone. And they lose the man. What if they lose Lazarus. And they found out he was not alive. Or he just fell and collapsed. Your destiny must open up tonight. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things. To prove your calling and election. To make it sure. There are things that must be in your life. To validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace. For God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture. And speak and close it and say let's pray. No. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. 
They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor and I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside pray. Those following online pray. Lord visit me. Lord visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Elam Shalawa Kasala Kaparatus. Ebra Kato Sekede Kaparianda Kapariasha. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business upon my church Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point, and the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tear. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. He 
la baranda skabaruta shala prekatele kaposia. Do to me, O oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah. Now we Oh yeah yeah, say. Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah. Now we Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anoint, if it's not there, it's not there, period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the walks of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, For the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed. That vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner 
that will change your life are we together please lift your hands and let me pray I believe in the grace for speed I have seen a measure of that grace and I know it is true that God can shift a man I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses ministries and so on and so forth father in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now inside and outside I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now at the count of three let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season let it rest on people now I release that grace take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside everywhere I activate the operation of this grace I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit receive the grace for speed receive the grace for kabakatalika parousia receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel I command speed 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 bring them out speed help that woman please my God I'm still praying in the name of Jesus it says ye have encompassed this mountain for too long turn ye not what I prophesy again like 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 fire from heaven let that grace for speed mantle a family now not just an individual let it come upon families families receive speed i shift you i shift you in the spirit new level speed speed bring them out speed you will never be the same never be the same I'm not praying for individuals now I'm praying for families any families stagnated here I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and I prophesy speed inside and outside I release speed right now now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the Lord is saying the Lord is bringing deliverance now I'm seeing chains if you are under this category as I'm praying now the fire of God I'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare, be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is 
one of it is liberty do you know what liberty is it's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks god in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of god with men as giving men liberty i want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let god give you a testimony are we together now he said while men slept the enemy came and sowed tears sowed weed among the i mean among the 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 the, the, the wheat and we are going to destroy everything for this purpose was the son of God made manifest I'm going to pray and at the count of three I will ask you to shout that name I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night but except God is not God you must be free Right now, in the name that is above all names, I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus, everywhere here overflow, one, two, three, outside. As you shout that name that is above all names, I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of God in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now release destiny release destiny every ordinance that is not the planting of God let it go now let it go now I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit let it go now I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh, yeah, yeah, say.
my friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus Please listen I I know that we don't have time but please I want you to every time the Lord shows me this then I know that he wants me to move around I begin to see lights a similitude of angels by my left and right and is is a very is a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people when this begins to happen all I need to do is you don't have to touch me just move around your road listen to me except God is not God as he has anointed as I pass your row if there is anything that is not of God it must let you go are we together now so please you pray the moment we do that then we'll begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the Spirit thank you Jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of Jesus Madam be free I take it out of your life now the hand of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ receive the Lord is touching you I'm seeing God's taking something out of someone's stomach here. It's going now. Now. I release it now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now. I'm seeing fire rising from this road. Just from, I don't know who it is, but fire is coming on someone from this room right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare
Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now, 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 now. Now, keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone. It is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of Jesus I declare and declare be free be free be free every devil of darkness be free now. please open your heart and receive stretch my hands here anything that help be free now be free now be free now be free now In a chain, a chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God, I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me overflow too. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Sela kaparato siketa. Every reproach, go now, go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. you be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please, accept God is not God.
whatever it is that has held you as I pass by the spirit the power of God comes on you some of you will be receiving impartation it's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is father in the name of Jesus honor your word right now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus right now before I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now, from the front to the back, upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please, everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues. And sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray Hallelujah. If you are in ministry, I pray again for the grace for prayer. Let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are not a man of prayer, you are not in ministry. Believe me, you are not in ministry. It's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry. I decree and declare a supply of the Spirit, an ability from heaven upon men and women of God that anyone who has the call of God upon his life whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail. Not give me tea and bread. Not give me tea and bread. To pray destiny altering prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow two B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk. You're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there now very quickly those trusting god to be ministered to um for any kind of healing make your way out quickly just like i've designated please quickly you come stand here by faith overflow one in front of your projector stand overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you'll be back to your seat and check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In a Jiraka, sir,
These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture. From and from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From Benue, from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus, look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
mama don't cry cancer i speak to you you have a name you have a voice release this lady now in the name of jesus my friend look at me you came all the way from thailand in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god this fractured leg i fix it back now you see what is happening to you what do you feel happening to you huh look at me go run Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when i held your leg i felt the power of god moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too i want to pray for you you see god is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God many footballers don't love Jesus they love football and they love the money that comes with it but we are not only here God has perfected this let me pray on the x-ray please father in the name of Jesus let this miracle remain forever Amen. I want to pray for both of you I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you but listen to me I'm sure I don't know you have never seen you can I prophesy on your career in the name of Jesus the son of the living God from today let the anointing of the Holy Ghost you are a footballer but you play by the anointing my friend it takes more than just kicking a ball I release the grace to excel and for you I release the grace to excel right now two of you will return back to Thailand and the Lord will honor you in Jesus name God bless you thank you so much for your patience we're about to pray on the requests I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I truly believe that as we pray on these requests that every situation that has defied God it must answer to the name of the Lord let her go now I curse you by the God of heaven out now Who else praise the Lord please let's rise thank you for your patience it's a miracle service if you're yet to submit your request please go ahead please go ahead hallelujah We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that god gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please i want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to i want you to believe because this is representing you before god i want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately Pray passionately. You're not done. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while. You are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord 
I'm seeing fire burn on this thing. I wanted to go down on my knees, but I just saw fire burning. And the Lord said, I should declare and speak over it. I'll declare and speak over it. Um, there is one gentleman and one lady. One gentleman, one lady. The power of God is coming on two of them. The moment that happens, then I have the release to speak on this. These are signs and wonders, my precious people. Sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them. A gentleman and a lady. This is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray. In the name of Jesus, believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defined the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide i call on the god of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure I, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today i have seen them they are strong they are fine the bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except god instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience i want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it there are just different versions of expressing your need for favor i want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of jesus christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names I decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of Jesus there are requests written here it is mercy that will answer it 
The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I declare mercy upon this request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stand representing the desires, the pain of your people. You have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted. Lord, let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request, may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit that brought the need for these requests, I banish them from your life in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this. Now please lift your hands. We're closing. Let me speak over your life. It is always my honor to do this because i have seen the creative power of the word of god i've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week i thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to zaria and testify himself that's why i didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and I was about to sleep when I got his text. He had been calling and I said, please send the text. And he sent it and I looked at it. And he said, I'm about to lose my job, my wife, my children, this and that. And suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me. On my bed, I laid hands and I sent him a text. I said, find that key. That's all I wrote. God is my witness. I will not stand here at this level and corner stories. This gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way. Don't they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God make a way? Hallelujah. What is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere? Didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number? He shared here, you remember? gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing god cannot do i'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ. A gentleman here, one of the years, checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything. 
he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son i'm not surprised and he came i don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are at liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job <laughs> hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i pray in the name of jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of god you will open your bible and look at it like this like a storybook you can read a book of 600 pages in one week but you can hardly finish one page of the bible it's an attack i decree and declare 
let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God may it rest upon you may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayer points and we're done herein is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit the grace for results is called the power of performance receive that grace now I speak to you produce results produce results repeated results predictable results in every area of your life be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ finally let me pray for you everything that is alive grows when you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years no teeth he can't talk you know that something is wrong with that child are we true your destiny is like a child if it is alive then it should grow when a tree grows and begins to mature it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit I don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience I declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as God touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God praise the Lord still standing everyone our time is gone I want to make an altar call I believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention let me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to Jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle I have given my life to Jesus but I need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. Win that war. Do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody.
to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. It's something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to him. The Bible says, all who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't believe this is all overflow one, overflow two. Join them very quickly. And the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out. God bless you. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand as I lead you to make this prayer. You are not just reciting a poem. This is a real um, conversation between you and the Lord. You are receiving his life and you are handing over yours. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Some of you come for altar call when we are saying in Jesus' name. You are not born again. You should come. The, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are we receive them into the fold the family of faith and i declare their sins forgiven and i declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them holy spirit i commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives make mighty men and women out of them I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I salute all of you for making this decision. And then for those who also made online, thank you for making this decision. Very quickly, I'd like you to follow. There's someone waving her hands, a lady. And all of you in concert, please follow her. And um, there will be a group of people to receive you very briefly. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for